ashamed to stand. Jesus, we're shouting and proclaiming. Jesus, no other name above the name of Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, we're not ashamed to stand.
that we give him room in our praise let's glorify and praise him let's magnify his name for he alone is worthy oh that's right go in and praise him everybody find a way to respond to the move of his presence right go ahead and praise him some more go ahead and worship him hallelujah your worship unlocks your avenue to a breakthrough that's right your worship unlocks your avenue to your breakthrough if you'll praise him you'll be that much closer to your miracle tonight That's right, go ahead and praise him, everybody. Either clap your hands, lift your hands, but do something to respond to the presence of the Lord here right now. Oh, I wish we had 100% participation in glorifying the Lord tonight, for he is worthy to be praised. Hallelujah, Lord, we love you, Jesus. in the presence of the Lord tonight I'm not just glad I'm in church but I'm glad I'm in his presence I feel the Holy Ghost here tonight the hand of God is in this place to touch somebody oh why don't you thank him for what he's getting ready to do in the remainder of this service somebody's prayer you've been praying is about to be answered in this place God's gonna demonstrate his power and his glory and his grace and his mercy I don't know at what point he's going to take over, but whenever he wants to, I want him to do it. If it's now in praise, if it's later in preaching, if it's in the altar service, God, just you do what you want to do. This is your service now. Amen. As you continue to worship the Lord, you can return to your seats.
Amen. It's certainly good to be in the presence of the Lord and so thankful for His goodness and His mercy and what we've experienced. Amen. Excited about the two that were baptized in Jesus' name this morning. Amen. Thankful for that. Thankful for that and excited about what God's doing. Amen. You are in an apostolic church tonight. Amen. One thing that means is that you can worship the Lord any way you feel like it. You can respond to his presence at any time he touches your heart. Amen. And it means that we repent of our sins, baptize in Jesus' name, and believe in the baptism of the Holy Ghost, speaking with tongues, just like the Bible said. Amen. And if you've never been baptized, you can be baptized tonight. If you've ever been filled with the Holy Ghost, tonight can be your night for a breakthrough. Amen. If you need healing, we still believe in divine healing. We still believe in miracles. Amen. And we've seen God do it, and we're thankful that he's going to do it again. Remember prayer tomorrow night at 730. Remember Wednesday night, 715, church right back here. On the 23rd at 11 o'clock, we've got our block party in uh our block party in Potts Camp at the ball field, so please remember that. And also the next day on the 24th, Brother Luke and Sister TJ St. Clair are going to be here, and we're excited about that, looking forward to a great, great time. The men's trip is this week. We're looking forward to that. Pray for our men. Amen. Remember the discipleship project. Every age group of the church is learning. Our Sunday school classes, our children's classes, and our youth are learning about discipleship, and we're teaching it here in Sunday mornings, uh, in the morning service for a few moments. And remember that we do have some books that have all of the books we have have been uh, have been sold, given away, and uh, so we'll be getting some more of those ordered this week. And looking forward to that. Amen. Thank you for your help in the disaster relief. I got another picture uh, this afternoon of one of our churches from an aerial view. And all you see is a, is a vast body of water with a blue roof sticking up out of that water. And that is one of our churches. And, uh, and pray for them. It is a total loss. And I appreciate you and what you've done. You can see these pans here, one on my right and one on my left. Those are disaster relief. If you want to give to that, uh, they'll be here tonight, next uh, Wednesday and also Sunday. And if you need to give by credit card, you can do so. Uh, we have many families of our churches and many of our churches that are displaced and your help is a tremendous tremendous blessing and we thank you for that and you can continue to do that the youth group will meet after service uh, in, in the prayer room if they're baptizing somebody which I hope they are you can just as a matter of fact since we're planning on baptizing people just meet over here after service amen we have uh, youth is in charge of the fundraiser next Saturday so remember that amen Amen. I'm thankful for the goodness of the Lord. I'm thankful for his presence. Amen. I'm telling you, the Holy Ghost is here in a real, real way. Praise God. I feel it. Something's about to explode in somebody's life in a good way. Amen. Lord, let hope come to somebody right now that's almost given up hope. I pray, God, let hope speak to their heart and let them know you've got it all under control. And you're going to work it out in Jesus' name. Stand with me. The ushers are coming to help us receive our evening offering. Amen. And we are so thankful for what the Lord is doing. Amen. Praise God. I am so excited. We are baptizing people every service. Amen. And that includes Zalen Lee. Scott Smith baptized this morning in Jesus' name. And also, Jenna Lee Greer was baptized this morning in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. Amen. Let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise for Holy Ghost revival. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. Lord, I pray, God, that you bless each one that gives tonight. God, let every tither be blessed according to your word. Let everyone that returns an offering to you, I pray that you would open the windows of heaven and bless them abundantly. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. 
In Jesus' name, let there be a blessing on the giver tonight. And the church said, amen. Give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Bring your offering to the Lord. Give the Lord a hand clap of praise as you're being seated. Praise God. Amen. Remember up here on the table in the front we have, uh, for those of you that did not get one of the Discipleship Project books, uh, there's the list of the devotionals for your family that uh, includes every night this week, and you can pick those up. They're right down here. Amen. And all of our family leaders, please, you and your family, uh, Every week, they're going to be sent home a discipleship project that you can complete with your children. And as you're working on these projects, we invite you to post pictures of your, uh, your family's discipleship activities to our Bethlehem Church of the Lord Jesus Christ Facebook page. And uh, we're looking forward to seeing what things you do with your family. Amen. I'm going to tell you that when they came out of Egypt... Pharaoh tried to say, you can go, but you got to leave your children behind. And Moses said, we're not leaving anybody behind. We're taking everybody. And I want to take everybody with us. And that means our families. We're planning on taking our families with us to heaven. And we, we're excited about the discipleship project. Hope that you'll participate. Amen. We're so thankful. Amen. I wonder, I wonder, and, and, and I'm, I'm, this may backfire on me, but maybe not. I want to talk to Micah for a minute if I can. Can I talk to you? Can you? Can you? He said, <laughs> he said, I don't think so. His, his name, he says, is, is what's your, tell him what your name is. Oh, t okay, tell him, tell him again. Pastor Micah. That's Pastor Micah. And tell him what you preach. I preach about the Holy Ghost. He preached about the Holy Ghost and what else? And I preach about the Holy Ghost like Daddy preached. He preached about the Holy Ghost like Daddy preaches. What else do you preach about? And my, my, and my, and my Holy Ghost preached. All right. He's a Holy Ghost preacher. Amen. He told him the other night to do the hokey pokey and turn themselves around. Somebody needs to... You may not need to do the hokey pokey tonight, but somebody needs to turn themselves around. Hey, there's a turnaround for somebody's family in this place tonight. I'm telling you, there is a turnaround for somebody in this place tonight. Why don't you stand to your feet and praise God if you believe it? If you've seen him do it before and you know he can do it again, why don't you give God praise? Oh, that's right. Keep worshiping the Lord as Brother Granger comes back to preach to us. Praise God together. Hallelujah. Let's do that again. Amen. All over the house. <clears throat> Somebody love him. Somebody praise him. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Amen, amen, amen. Hallelujah. Man, what a wonderful God that we serve. Amen. Amen.
Amen. Thankful for the presence of the Lord that's here tonight. Amen. Thankful for what God is doing. Amen. I am directed of the Holy Ghost tonight. Amen. Uh, thank you, Jesus. If you have your Bible, Psalms 120. Amen. Psalms 120. And then John, St. John 14 and 27. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And give honor to the ministry tonight. Amen. Your pastor, Pastor V and his family, Bishop Wilson, his family. Thank you for the work of work of God that's going on here in Bethlehem. Amen. I give you honor tonight. Amen. It's so wonderful to see this beautiful crowd. Amen. Here tonight in this place. Amen. Amen. So wonderful. God wants to help somebody tonight. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Psalms 120. Psalms 120. I'm going to read the sixth and the seventh verse. My soul hath long dwelt with him that hateth peace. He said, I am for peace, but when I speak, they are for war. St. John 14 and 27, Jesus speaking. He said, peace I leave with you. My peace I give unto you. Not as the world giveth. See, the world offers peace also, but it's the peace of escape. The peace from the avoidance of trouble and refusing to face the things that are in front of you. Amen. I feel like I'm preaching already. Not as the world giveth, give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. Amen. The world would tell you, take another drink, do another line. Amen. Find a place to get high or find something. Amen. Some immoral act to commit to bring you up away. Amen. And, and have that temporary, temporary satisfaction, which, which is a false peace in itself. Amen. But there's a peace of God. Amen. That's available tonight in this house. Amen. I don't know what you came in here with, but the Lord is saying, I'm ready to help you in your trouble. I'm ready to bless you in your circumstance. I'm ready to bring you through it. Amen. I've come to preach tonight. Amen. About pursuing peace. Hallelujah. Pursuing peace. Amen. I want you to raise your hands toward heaven right now. Amen. Everybody all over the house and let's pray together. Lord, I thank you, Lord, for the freedom and the liberty of your spirit that's here. I pray, God, that you would anoint me, Lord, to preach. Anoint, God, me to be sensitive to your spirit. Anoint every ear. Somebody lift up their voice and help me right now. Uh, anoint every soul, every heart, every mind. Hallelujah. Oh, I thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. I got any just, just, just shouters in the house that's going, going through some things, but they know that God's able. Hallelujah. Yes. Come on, do that unto the Lord right now. Lift up your voice, Zion. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You may be seated pursuing peace. David is writing Psalms 120 from the aftermath of his encounter with Doug the Edomite at Nob, the city of priests. David is fleeing from the wrath and the anger of King Saul and finds refuge and provision at Nob. 
He's around 25 years old. And David flees Noah. Saul shows up. And it is Doug that lies about David to Saul. And then Doug, underneath the direction of King Saul, unmercifully kills 85 priests of the Lord, women and children. That's why David, I believe, with a broken heart would pen the Psalms and say, I am for peace, but when I speak, they are for war. David carried an anointing from God, being anointed by the prophet Samuel somewhere around 12 years old. When Samuel, the man of God, the prophet of that era, comes to Bethlehem, David's hometown, seeking for the right son to anoint. The elders had the elders of the city had one question to ask. They wanted to know if the man of God came in peace. They said, do you come in peace? I will st stop for just a second and say, tell you tonight, it does matter uh, the fervency and the attitude that the man of God carries and the weight of his words. If you can begin to understand that, you will begin to esteem the plan of God. Amen. They wanted to know, do you come in peace? Far beyond their ability to understand. As Samuel, the man of God, passed up seven of Jesse's sons to find David from the backside of a shepherd's field and anoint David with all. The Bible says that the Spirit of the Lord came upon David from that day forward. That day David, when he, when he felt that anointing all run down the top of his head, a man going down his body, when he, when he felt that, the Bible says that he was, the Spirit of the Lord came upon David from that day forward. David was introduced to the kingdom of God. David got a taste of something, amen, that was way before his time. He got a taste of something, amen, that we're tasting right now. He got a taste of something, amen, that we tasted this morning. Amen. He got a taste of the kingdom of God. Well, what is the kingdom of God, Brother Granger? The kingdom of God is righteousness, peace, peace. And joy in the Holy Ghost. Righteousness is imputed to us. Amen. When we go down in the name of Jesus. You can't be righteous without the blood of the Lamb. And the only way that you can receive the blood of the Lamb. Is to receive the name of Jesus. Called over your soul. The Oh come on somebody. The only way that you can receive. Amen. Righteousness is when you go down in the name of Jesus. There's something so deliberating, something so delivering about the name of Jesus. There's just something about that name. Is somebody praising? Amen. Righteousness is imputed to us. Peace, joy in the Holy Ghost is imparted to us. We feel the joy of the Holy Ghost and in his presence is fullness of joy. Amen. But that middle one says peace. And that's what I've come to preach tonight. I've come to preach to us about pursuing peace. I'm not saying you can't have peace. I'm saying sometimes you're going to have to pursue after peace. You're going to have to put one foot in front of the other and move toward the kingdom of God. Amen. Give me Philippians 4 and 7 on the board. Hallelujah. Just this little illustration. Amen. This kind of helps me. This kind of helps me understand this. Can I get y'all's help tonight? Hallelujah. All right. Pastor V right here. I want you to stand right here. Pastor V is my understanding. Lord, I want you to face that way. 
He's moving in that direction. My understanding when I'm going through things or the enemy attacks me or there's things in my life that weigh me down. Amen. Reminders of my past. Re come on somebody. I'm in the Holy Ghost. Reminders of my mistake. Reminders of the pain. Amen. Reminders of the hurt. And I don't know how I'm going to put one foot in front of the other. The peace of God which passes my understanding. It passes me up and and it turns around and it says come and follow me I couldn't have got there myself but the peace of God said I'm going to lead you and I'm going to guide you amen but I had to pursue after what God was putting in front of me I had to come to an understanding that I couldn't lean on my own understanding but in all my ways acknowledge God and he would direct my path somebody give him a shout of love right now hallelujah amen cause this uh, to me, it's the frailty of mankind. It's the part of being a human and dealing with mistakes and failures and trip-ups and mistakes. Amen. It could be anything that prevent us from moving forward. But I'm thankful tonight that the peace of God, which passes my understanding, because if I leaned on my own understanding and I leaned on my own capability, I would be lost and without hope. But God makes a way when there is no way. He makes a way when there is no way. What you need tonight is to pursue after the peace that God puts in the church. You need to pursue pursue after the anointing hallelujah that God places before you <laughs> David was a man before his time he was a man after God's own heart he was a man of insight Psalms 85 and 10 the Bible says that righteousness and peace have somebody listen to me righteousness and peace have kissed each other in Psalms 34 and 14 he writes depart from evil and do good seek peace and pursue it amen in Psalms 23 the word of the Lord is penned surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life I've got goodness and mercy amen by behind me but I must pursue peace I've got goodness and mercy following me but I've got to follow the peace of God he's not going to give it to me like the world gives it to me but he's going to bring me through it if he's ever brought you through it won't you be a witness right now unto the Lord Go ahead and love his name. Amen. Amen. I present you with a question tonight, dear friend. What are you pursuing in your life? Are you pursuing, amen, a life without God? Are you pursuing a life, amen, without direction? Are you pursuing, amen, are you stuck in the mistakes of your own life? Are you stuck in the heartache of yesterday? What are you pursuing today, my friend? What in the world are you pursuing? David was not foreign to pursuing peace. Amen. It was not, it was not something strange to David. In the valley of Eli, when the in 1 Samuel 17, when the Philistines roared and shouted for the battle, 
And Goliath for 40 days stood and said, send a man to fight me. With all of his intimidation, amen, with all of his tactics, he tried to paralyze, amen, the, the camp of Israel with fear. But David, that man that had got a hold of the kingdom of God, he comes to the valley of Elah and he says, who is this uncircumcised Philistine that he should defy the armies of the living God? His brothers told him to shut up. We know your pride. We know your ego but he was sent from the father and he knew what purpose that he had and he said is there not a cause is there not a cause David knew what it was like to pursue peace in the face of adversity he was brought to Saul what do you know David David told him amen I can take this guy out I can handle business and be fear, fear not, be, dis, be not dismayed. Amen, just send him out, send me out to fight him. You don't understand, David, this guy's been fighting since he was just a lad. Amen, but David reminded him of something, or told him rather, I was on the backside of a shepherd's field. I was watching my father's flock, and there was a lamb, and the paw of the lion, and the paw of the bear came and snatched, amen, that sheep from me amen and I went after that sheep and I took him from the mouth amen of the lion I saved him from the paw of the bear what are you doing David it's just one sheep I'm pursuing peace in the face of my adversity I don't care how loud the devil roars I don't care how much his intimidation gets in our face We've got to be willing to pursue, pursue peace in the face of adversity. He said, you come to me with a spear and a sword, but I come to you in the name of the Lord. Goliath fell face first and David went over there and he pulled out that sword and he cut the head of Goliath off. Amen. You know what it'll take? It'll take to have peace in your life to shut the mouth of your enemy. Amen. Cut his head off once and for all. If it's depression, let depression be smote in the name of Jesus. Amen. Let God fight your battles but you must be willing to pursue peace. The javelin of Saul. Saul would hurl at David fits of rage and anger. He would hurl it at him trying to kill David. David never once raised his hand against the anointing of the Lord. When it would have been so easy, amen, as David wrote the words, you've taught my hands to war. It would have been easy for David to take matters in his own hand and kill God's anointed. It would have been so, what are you doing, David? Why don't you just talk any way you want to? Why don't you just live? Why don't you kill the people that are trying to mess with you? You don't understand. I'm not about violence. I'm about peace. I'm not about hate. I'm about love. It don't matter if you were born in a family Amen. That got your mind all messed up about the things of God. There is a God that will give you a peace that passes all understanding. He'll show you how to love. He'll show you how to help. He'll show you how to read. Come on, somebody love him tonight. Come on, stand to your feet, lift your hands in the air and worship God. I wonder if somebody lift their voice right now. Thank you, Jesus. He 
It's not fun laying down without the peace of God at nighttime, is it? Amen. Living with mis mistakes, pain, and regret. Amen. I think we got to stay standing tonight. Living with pain and regret. David, I feel the Holy Ghost. David said, David said, the gentleness of the Lord has made me great. Amen. Sometimes it's not overwhelming. Sometimes it's just a gentle voice. It's just a gentle pull. Amen. David committed adultery and had, had, the, had the husband of the woman killed and goes in and has a baby with Bathsheba and the baby dies. And then after that, another child is born. Amen. And David names the baby Solomon which means prince of peace. And the very next verse, the word of the Lord says that Nathan the prophet goes into David and renames Solomon Jedidiah, which means beloved of the Lord. God did not okay David's failure. He did not okay David's mistake. But he did okay David getting up, amen, and pursuing after peace in the face of every mistake that he had made. Even a man after God's own heart made mistakes, even a man... Amen. That, that knew what it was like to be esteemed. Amen. David has killed his ten thousands. Amen. He knew what it was like to hold the scepter in his hand. But he knew what it was like to fail. He knew what it was like to fall. In the face of everything that faced him. He had to pursue peace. Even David on his deathbed had to be reminded of the peace of God that came with doing his will. His son had stolen the kingdom from him. He's laying on his cold bed. He couldn't even get warm. He couldn't even get warm. Amen. They covered him with blankets. Amen. They even brought a virgin in there to keep him warm. And David knew or not, amen, but his bed was cold. And that's how it feels, amen, when you're not doing the will of God. That's what it feels when you lay your head on the pillow at night. And you know, amen, that you know you could have found a place to find and pursue after the, come on somebody, and pursue after the will of God. God. Amen. You've got to rise to the occasion. Amen. David did the will of God even on his deathbed. And the Bible says that he worshiped. What you need to do is worship through every stage of your life and pursue after the peace that God wants to give you. Come on, let's lift our hands toward heaven tonight. There's a peace tonight. I want you to hear Brother Grain just keep praying. There's a peace tonight for you. Amen. But I want you to mix your faith right now with what you feel. Amen. If God's talked to you tonight, amen. If I could get a church that's on board right now, and I believe you are.
Amen. Some people are about to step out in faith and say sometimes they're overwhelmed with the situations in their own life, but they're willing to pursue after the peace. Amen. That God is presenting to them. There's a peace tonight that'll pass up your understanding. Amen. Will you step out tonight and say, I want that peace in my life. Come on, give me a praying church right now. Give me a praying church right now. Come on, sir. Come on, ma'am. Amen. There's a peace tonight. There's a peace tonight that's for you. There's a peace tonight that's for you. Let the weighted move of the Spirit come over your soul right now. Come on, there's a gentle call of the Holy Ghost tonight. Amen. If you need the baptism of the Holy Ghost, I would be around this altar. Amen. I would come and step out of my pew tonight and I would make my way. Come on, let, let the church pray with you tonight. Amen. Let the ministry wrap their arms around you. Come on, find a place tonight. Find a place tonight to pursue after the peace that God is putting in front of you. Amen. To the peace of God begins to rule in your heart. Let it rule right now, man of God. Let it rule right now, young man, young lady sir ma'am yes 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 there's a beautiful presence of the holy ghost that's beginning to fall right now go ahead uh, open up your heart to the peace of god Come on, let's lift our hands toward heaven tonight. Come on, drink in the peace of the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Go ahead, somebody love him. Somebody worship him. Yes, God. Sometimes it takes a, a good fight to push through to that place of peace. Sometimes it takes great effort. Amen. Are you extending that effort tonight? Amen. Come on, push right now in the Holy Ghost. Yes. Yes. 